certainly I would not want to claim that this is the same as taking psychedelics. It's distinct, but it has some things in common. David Glowacki, cross-disciplinary researcher, artist, author, and activist, here to speak to us today about the creation of psychedelic experiences within virtual reality. David, welcome to the Crypto Mile. Hey, thanks, Brian. It's good to be here. David, could you explain the name of this VR experience that you've created and what would the average member of the public using it, how would they feel when they experience it? So the experience that we recently published on, which has been the subject of some press, is called uh, Isness. It allows people who are distributed across the world in different physical spaces to uh, log in to the same shared virtual space and have together the isness experience. When you arrive in the shared virtual space, you see people from um, other parts of the world. You see people as sort of luminous, energetic essences. You're a light that has very soft, diffuse boundaries, and you're in the space with others that have these soft, diffuse boundaries, and you're able to speak with them. It's a facilitated experience, so there's every experience has you know, four to five participants with one person who is facilitating the experience. In what ways is it similar to a psychedelic experience? That's a good question, because like definitely what we're not trying to do with this work is simulate psychedelics. What we were really doing in this work was we were setting out to create what, what some psychiatrists call um, self-transcendent experiences. Self-transcendent experiences are those which take you out of your habitual normal reference point um, where you think of yourself as having this body. In a self-transcendent experience, um, people tend to have experience of a larger unity, right? Beyond the sort of boundaries of themselves and a sense of connectedness to others into the world around them. And certainly I would not want to claim that this is the same as taking psychedelics. It's distinct, but it has some things in common. I'm sure you have thought about this, but there could be interesting applications for relationship therapy. You know, somebody's not getting on well with their, their spouse. Yeah, well, a few of the, a few of my co-authors on the paper are actually explicitly thinking about whether it could be uh, adapted for exactly the sorts of applications you're talking about. I don't want to say that VR will ever completely replace medications. I think probably it could be a really useful tool to have for some people. Another area that we're looking at using it for is to help people that are suffering from end of life anxiety. So helping those suffering from end of life anxiety as well as family and loved ones who are um, part of that process you know for someone who say has a terminal cancer diagnosis or something and we're doing that because that's one of the areas in which psychedelics have been used it's for people that are in a similar situation the limitation with psychedelics is it's often because psychedelics are an individual experience it doesn't it doesn't involve the family and the loved ones to the same degree that this would david and thank you very much for joining us today on the crypto mile thanks a lot brian i enjoyed the discussion